hallelujah. Sing the 
coming this morning. Welcome to 2021. Praise the Lord. What a great year it's going to be. Praise the Lord. Well, if you guys want to greet each other this morning with a holy kiss. No, I'm just kidding. Shake hands. Whatever. Don't kiss each other. Don't kiss me. Come after you. Uh, children can be dismissed. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody getting along. I'm going to start the year off right. Don't have to separate you, Ben, from anybody. No, I'm just kidding. Praise the Lord. Happy New Year. Welcome. And welcome to all the people online and who are going to watch this video for the next 300 years. We welcome you, too, in the future. All right. Well, Jay and Sandra are off. They were at a wedding this weekend, and it was about a four-hour drive, so they just decided to stay overnight. So you're stuck with me. Um, he did, uh, if you were here on Wednesday night, he did give me permission to preach at least four hours, so I hope you brought a lunch. <laughs> or you at least ate breakfast, so I'm just kidding. Well, uh, Kay, did you want to come up and bless the offering? so that we put your house first, your purposes first, time with you first in our lives that we might truly be the light in the dense darkness that covers the earth and fulfill your purpose for us and bring glory to Jesus who will give it all to you. We bless you for it, Father. And we pray also, Father, for our our president, President Trump, for Vice President Pence, for our Congress, for our Senate, for our House of Representatives, for our judicial system, every Supreme Court of the states, the Supreme Court of the nation, the circuit courts, the district courts, the civil courts, we're asking for you're the one who said in Isaiah 33, 22, I am judge, I am lawgiver, and I am king. I will save you. That's the foundation of our government, Father, the judicial, the legislative, and the presidential. Based on your word, Father, it's you alone who can save our nation, which is founded on you looking to you to preserve our nation and we're thanking you Father that good always overcomes evil in Jesus 
Jesus' name. We bless President Trump and all those who stand for righteousness in our nation with boldness, with courage to speak the truth, not to back down, not to compromise, but to stand in this day and to speak truth in the name and by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of covenant that was shed not only for us, but for our nation. We bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. And we call 2021 a victorious year. And we thank you for another four victorious years of office for President Donald John Trump. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's start 2021 off with a joke. How about that? What did the farmer say when he lost his tractor? Where's my tractor? It was better in my head. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your power, and your might, and your salvation, Lord, that you've provided through Jesus. We thank you for your precious word, and that we get to hear from your word today, and learn from your word, and find out the truth of your word. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is in us and among us, Lord, and he is our teacher, and we will lean on him to teach us and guide us what needs to be done today. And we thank you, and we honor you in your mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, today, the first Sunday of 2021, in preparing for this, for this message, uh, I was praying and I had a message prepared and uh, the Lord told me, no, we can do that later. We need to set the tone for the year and we got to set it high. And as in, he was telling me that we need to talk about where Jesus left the church. And that is standing in victory. Walking on victory. Now, you may look at the world around us and see all the calamity and things going on. And you might say... Seems like victory is far off. Turn to Second Timothy three. We'll start there. Darkness has seemingly surrounded us, but there is another truth. Second Timothy three says, uh, just verse one. But know this: that in the last days. Perilous times will come. Perilous times. Uh, I recently, if you've ever heard of Rick Renner, uh, he dives into the, the Greek of, of all the scriptures, and it's incredible. And uh, he actually has a, a, a Bible called the Renner Interpretive Version uh, coming out in March, I believe. But I'm just going to read you what the Greek basically says uh, through the words of Mr. Renner. 2 Timothy 3, one, 
It says that you emphatically and categorically need to know with unquestionable certainty that in the very end of days when time has sailed to its final port and no more time remains for the journey, that the last season will stand in the midst of uncontrollable, unpredictable, hurtful, treacherous, and menacing times that will be emotionally difficult for people to bear. Well, that sounded like yesterday morning. If you turn on the news, bad news is everywhere. But there's good news. The last days shouldn't be a treacherous time for the believers. Because it's not. It's a triumphant time. You know, the last days have been, have been going on since Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came and fell on all the flesh. That was when the last days started. And the triumphant church should have been progressing in glory to glory year after year. But the devil always throws something in there and, and seems like it snuffs out the flame. But guess what? In this time, you and me, we were chosen, we were called, we were ordained, and we've been anointed for these last days. You, you have been chosen for this time. You know, people can look around and see all the darkness around, and they say, What's going on? Who's to blame for what is all going on in this world? The crime wave, uh, doctrinal issues in theology with, with modernism that denies the word of God and the truth of God and the power of God. The introduction to evolution just only a couple hundred years ago trying to derail the word of God and deny the word of God and the truth of the word of God. You know, throughout all of history, a monkey has never given birth to anything but a monkey. A fish, a largemouth bass has never birthed anything but a fish, another largemouth bass. Of course, you guys know that. False teachings spreading throughout the church that deny the supernatural. Deny the power of God. Deny healings. Deny tongues. Deny, 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 deny. How could you deny something that's in this book? It's the spirit of the Antichrist. And then you look at the world and all the natural disasters and diseases of the world. And it seems like just when, you've, when, you, when they find a cure, when, when natural medicine finds a cure for one, and another disease erupts. And it's a cycle. Well, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, if you look at it, it says that Satan is the god of this world. So who's to blame for all this? It's Satan and the powers of darkness. Acts 10.36 says that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Not God. God is not in the business of oppressing his children. God is not in the business of destroying his beloved. Hmm. Satanic oppression, the spirit of bondage that binds even God's own children, it keeps him blind to the truth. A lot of that is false teaching. You know, the word says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. The understanding of who God is and what he's done for you. You know, what's even worse than lack of knowledge is wrong knowledge. Because you got to dig up the old root of religion that was in there first and then replant with the truth of the word. But guess what? It's all Satan trying to defeat you. And trying to rob and steal away what really belongs to you. So what do we do? Well, turn to Ephesians 
Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, against the rulers of darkness of this age. What's that age? The last days. Against spiritual hosts of of wickedness in heavenly places. It doesn't say we're fighting against God. It says wickedness and darkness. Then it goes on to say, stand therefore. And you know, I've heard it preached many times that we're just to stand and take the hits from the enemy. Stand and take on the onslaught of the devil. And hopefully God will save us. Oh Lord, I'm standing. That's so wrong. We've been taught wrong a long time. I suppose all those who preach on that aspect have forgotten Ephesians 1, 21 and 22, where it says that, and God placed Jesus over all powers and all principalities and made his enemy his footstool. Let's look at the word withstand there in Ephesians 6. When it says that you might, uh, if, you, if you do all these things and put on the full armor of God, you will with, be able to withstand. What does with, withstand mean? It doesn't mean just to squeak by. It doesn't mean to just barely get along. It's saying that when you put on the full armor of God, you can remain completely undamaged and unaffected by whatever forced comes against you. It means to defy, to fight, to oppose, to repel and resist, to refuse to give in to. Brothers and sisters, when things come against you in this world, when you stand on the word of God and have the full armor of God prepped and ready on on you and in your spirit, all you have to do is refuse to let the devil and his companions take your victory. Don't let the devil take your victory. The Greek word there is anthistemi, which means to forcefully declare one's personal conviction to the point where they unswervingly stand and don't give up. We have to stand and not veer off the word of God. Not let unbelief come in. The opposite of withstand is to bow, to give in to, to stoop, or to submit, to surrender or yield. 2020 showed us through all these trials, and it's sad to say that the church mainly as a whole has done the exact opposite of what the word says we're supposed to. COVID-19 and the reaction of the church, capital C, made it very clear that the church is willing to bow and submit to darkness. Or as Act 1038 says, satanic oppression. The very entity ordained and anointed by God to stand in authority, in authority over such darkness, shut its doors, told people to stay home, Sadly, some are still closed to this day. Thousands, you know, thousands and thousands of churches each month close their doors regardless of COVID-19 or not. That number is astronomically higher now than it was before. My brothers, this should not be. Because a house built on the truth, a house built on the rock, will stand. Jesus said, it will stand if your house is built on the rock. How revealing is it if all these places crumble? Over something that's been redeemed through the blood of Jesus. 
something that was part of the curse of the law that we are not bound to anymore. Jesus is the victor. Jesus is the victor. Jesus has stripped the power of the enemy. If you turn to uh, Psalm 91. Psalm 91, 13 says, And you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Now there's two lions in the Bible, one being the natural lion that often Satan is referred to. There are many examples of Satan being referred to as a lion, and you know those very well. But there's another lion, and that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And if you look into what the tribe of Judah, what, Ju the, what the word Judah means is Judah means praise. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of praise. The word says that God inhabits the praises of his people. When two or more gather, he is there with them. And when, he's pray and when they're praising his name, he gets a dancing. And like Paul and Silas, when they were in jail, they were praying. And yes, we're supposed to pray. But at the midnight hour, when, when, when darkness is at its peak, what did they do? They sang praises. They were glorifying God. And God got to tap in his foot. And the chains fell. The prison walls shook. And they walked out of there. If you want to get God to work for you, start praising him. You got stuff going on in your life right now. And it's dark and it looks, looks rough. Start praising the Lord for his victory. Start praising the Lord. Now, when it talks about uh, the lion and the cobra and the serpent, the young lion and, and the serpent, you still trample underfoot, it's not talking about natural lions, but it's talking about forces as strong and as fierce as lions. As strong and as fierce as lions. Psalms 57 verse 4 says that my soul is among lions. In today's world, if you've been paying attention... It seems as though that we are surrounded by these forces. Fierce, evil opposition is everywhere. But even though that we are surrounded by these forces of darkness, they are helpless and powerless against us if we know how to deal with them. Colossians 2.15 Colossians 2.15 says that having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. That'll give you something to shout about. Hallelujah. He has disarmed principalities and powers and made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. In what? That being dead in your trespasses, he was made alive together with him and has forgiven you all your sins and has wiped out the handwriting of requirements, which was the curse of the law, the law that was against us. He has taken it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. If you don't have anything to shout about in your life, you can shout about that God has wiped your sins out completely. No more. The word says that he will remember their sins no more. All the bad things and all the sin that you've committed in the past, in the present, and even future sin has already been paid for. Paid in full. Praise God. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, Colossians 2.15 says that he's disarmed, he's spoiled, he's renounced the authority of and stripped down these powers and principalities. Yes. Praise the Lord. They are powerless. Psalm 23 many times has been used as, as a scripture uh, for funerals. How many of you have ever heard that scripture read at a funeral? Yes. I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, you know, the issue is, is that if you keep on reading, the guy never dies. He says he's walking through. He's walking through. He never dies. He's going through the valley, facing evil. But then later on, he says, my cup runs over. And my joy is complete. And he says that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me the last day of my life. All the days. All the days. See, he's still alive. He ain't dead. He knows he's going to continue on in his life even though he's going through a valley experience. Come on. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You see, in this life, Satan is the god of this world. And Satan rules the kingdom of darkness. It goes back to God 101. God, good. Satan, bad. Bad. It's that easy. But that means that throughout our entire lives on this planet, because... Because of Adam and the fall. That means that through, throughout our entire lives on this world, we are continually walking through the shadow of this valley of death. Shadows of spiritual death is all around us. Shadow of sickness and disease. The shadow of wants and needs and poverty and disasters and hate. Especially hatred towards God. But there's good news, though. Verse 5 says, in Psalm 23, But he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Yes. See, these lions and cobras and, and young lions are all images and of the devil and of demons and all the powers of darkness. The enemies in verse 5 are these powers. Surrounded by darkness. Surrounded by demons. Surrounded by the devil. Surrounded by the darkness of this world. God prepares a table for you. He prepares a table. What's on the table? Victory. Victory. Even though the enemy is present and will stay present in this world until we're out of here. God has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. In the presence of, of your opposition. In the presence of darkness all around you. God prepares a table for you. Where you can sit down and... And enjoy the harvest. Enjoy the fruit. The problem is, is that most people, as they walk through this valley experience and, and walk through the times of this world, they're too busy looking away from the table at the enemy. Instead of feasting their eyes at the table. It's time to get our eyes off of the enemy and start looking at the table of victory. There's victory on the table over all powers of the devil. That's why 
Psalm 91 says that you shall trample. You shall tread. Walk on him. Walk on the devil. The devil's got to be underneath you for you to walk on him, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Colossians 2.15 said that he's stripped from all of his power. He's been made a fool. A made a fool. You know, the description of this in the Greek actually says that... that uh, that back in those times, whenever they conquered a, a, a mighty army, and if that mighty army had a, had a great warrior in it, it says that they would cut off their thumbs. Because in that way, that, that warrior could never hold a sword again. That warrior could never combat against them again. Hmm. <laughs> In a sense, Jesus cut off the thumbs of the devil where he could never come at you again. All his powers have been stripped. Another thing they would do is they would cut off the big toe. Ouch. Cut off anything, ouch. I smashed my thumb with a two-pound hammer and ouch. But you know, it says that they would cut off their big toes and so that way... That mighty warrior, though he may, you know, not have any thumbs, now he also can't run or be agile. He's lost his big toe. He's powerless. He's basically a cripple in the sense of doing combat. He's powerless. He can do nothing. But the same goes for the devil. He's been made a fool. And he's been paraded through the heavenlies. And all of heaven has laughed at him. All of heaven. Jesus is the head of the church. And we are the body of Christ. And he's put all things under his feet. Ephesians 1.22 says all things, all powers, all principalities. Matthew, 8, uh, Matthew 28.18 says that Jesus said that all authority in heaven has been given to me. That's not what it says. It says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he says, now you go and you preach the gospel. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. All authority. You see, the, the, the presence of darkness may always be surrounding us on this world, but it doesn't have to affect you. You can withstand. You can be untouched, unscathed by these powers on this world. Because guess what? If you're a believer, baptized and born again, I'm telling you what, there's nothing that this world can throw at you that you don't have the power to overcome. And withstand and remain completely unscathed, untouched. You see, Jesus is, is the head of the body. He's the head of the church. And we are all growing in him. Amen? Amen. Now, if Jesus is the head and Satan is under his feet, yes. that means... You could be sitting there going, well, I, you know, I don't know. I've had a lot of things come against me. I guess I'm just the little toe, just the little toe of Jesus. Well, that doesn't matter. Because even if you're the little toe of Christ, the devil and his power and his companions of darkness are still under you. They're still under you. They're still under you. Guess what? Honestly, if you're the callus on the bottom of Jesus' foot. I know we got some nasty feet in here. I mean, we got some working men in here. Hoorah. Amen. But if you're the callus on the bottom of Jesus' foot, guess what? I think that's the best seat in the house because you get to sit there and watch Jesus stomp the devil right in the face. Come on. You got the best seat in the house. Front row. 
That's why the Bible says you'll tread on them. You will walk on them. You will walk on top of them. All the powers. All the powers and principalities. Because Jesus has been set above. He's been placed in the heavenly places over all principalities and powers. That's a good time to shout. Joshua 1.3, the Lord was talking to Joshua and he says, Just as I have told Moses, he says, I have given you all of this land. All of it. But whatever you tread upon is yours. Whatever you tread upon is yours already. You see, God had already given him everything. All of it. Whatever you see. But wherever you tread on, whatever you tread on is yours. God, in a sense, has already provided us everything in advance. But you see, what we tread on is what we take possession of. What does this mean? It means what we put work in and find in this book and read through its scriptures These things in this word, whatever we decide to put our foot down on in this word, whatever we decide to, uh, that's a wacky word, anthistemi, whatever we decide to forcefully declare as our personal conviction, whatever we decide to unswervingly stand on and not give up, you will take possession of it. You will take possession of it. Why? Why? Because God's already given it. Through Christ, all things are yours. Hallelujah. He's provided it through through Jesus. It's time to put our foot down on victory. It's time to put our foot down on healing. It's time to put our foot down on blessings and all the promises of God. It's time to get in the word. You see, to, to, to tread on something implies that, that we have to do it. We have to walk on it. We have to get in here and put in the work. Treading is a lot different than walking. I did some treading this weekend. I, I, I tried to get some hunting in. And uh, Paul graciously lets me hunt on a little half a section up, up uh, north of Green. And uh, we had a big rain and whatever on Tuesday. And so I tried to get out there Friday night. And uh, the road uh, was very muddy. And uh, I was doing pretty good. Uh, you know, I got a Toyota Tacoma. They're pretty solid. And the four-wheel drive is really good. Anyway, uh, I started going up the hill. And all I had to do was get over the hill. And I was there. And... Uh, about halfway up that hill, I was going straight, and all of a sudden it was like somebody just pushed, like a rhino pushed my truck from the side, and I just went, woo And what I didn't know, as I later found out from the farmer that came and pulled me out, was that there was a natural spring that comes out of the hill there, and it runs down the road, and, it, and I just went, and I hit straight into that spring, and, well, the rest was history. But anyway, the treading part was I had to... You know, I was trying to get rocks and stuff and put them under my tires and try to get out, and it just wasn't working. So then I pulled my trusty cell phone out. And, uh, you know, because technology is the greatest thing on the planet. But I looked at it, and I was like, well, I better call Paul, see if he can, knows a farmer. And, and uh, up in the top left corner, it said, no service. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so on this... You know, the, the road's kind of cut into the hill, so there's just embankments on each side. and so There's no walking in the grass, so I had to walk straight down the middle of this muddy road. And I was, I'm telling you what, I was doing some treading. That mud was sticky and it's heavy. Isn't that right, Paul? So I, I treaded up this hill and jumped on this big old rock, and so I finally got a hold of them, and I got pulled out. But, you know, that was work. That was work. And you see, a lot of Christians, they get saved and born again, and they hear all these great things about about the promises of God and the blessings of God, and they just want it all to fall on them. Fall on me, Lord. 
Send it. Send the rain. Well, you know, if you don't know what this word says, and you don't take a hold of it. You see, a lot of people believe in healing, but then when the time comes to put their foot down on it, whenever the enemy comes against them, they, they, they stumble. They say, oh, I guess it's not true. Or whenever, you know, they're believing for financial things. In the world of this darkness, guess what? Things happen. Things happen, don't, do they not? Man, look at this last year. How many people suffered financially? Hmm. But if you're not standing on the word of God, you can let that darkness overcome you. You got to tread on it. You got to walk on it. The word says that those, the righteous are like trees by the river. That even in drought, their leaves never, never wither. You see, you don't get to the point of being this beautiful, massive tree that doesn't wither even though the world around it's dry as a bone. Because you see, the roots have gone down deep. And they're still getting drink. You don't get that way being a dandelion in the Bible. Like a da little dandelion seed where it just kind of floats. You can't just float over it. You got to dig. You got to tread. You got to know what it says. That's why the Lord says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And 1 Peter, 1 Peter uh, 3 says, nope, 1 Peter 1 says that all things that pertain to life and godliness are yours. Through what? Through the knowledge of him. See, you got to tread in here. You got to find out what it says. And then you could stand on unswervingly, wholeheartedly convicted, unmovable, unshakable. You can avoid the drought. Standing on this word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to put effort in. Finding out God's promises and taking possession of it. Some may say, well, I'm waiting on God to heal me. I've been there before. I understand. But you see, in reality, God's already supplied your healing. He's already supplied it. He's already supplied it through Christ. By his stripes, ye were healed. We were healed, as in past tense. It means it's already been done. So time to put down, put our foot down on healing and walk in it. Tread on it. Tread on it. 2 Corinthians 18 says that God is faithful. God is faithful. And then verse 20 says that all the promises of God are maybe in Christ. Maybe. See, a lot of people, that's what a lot of people think. That's how they think about God. They want to sit there and beg God, oh God, oh me. And they think God's up there. They want to get the prayer chain because they need to get more people on board to, for God to hear them. No. The word says that by faith, we know that when we pray, God hears us. God hears us. And if we know that God hears us, we know that we have what we ask. Amen? That's why verse 20 says that all the promises of God are yes in Christ. Who here is in Christ? All right, we can lay hands on the rest of you and get you saved later. All the promises of God are yes in Christ. We just got to put our foot down. And anthistemi, oh, I hate that word. You just gotta, the, key to, the key to that is you just got to say it real fast and then nobody knows you messed up. Anthistemi. 
We have to forcefully declare the word of God and the promise of healing or any and every other promise of God through Jesus and stand unswervingly. We can curb stomp the devil's head, reminding him when he comes against us that he has been stripped of all his power and all his authority. And when he messes with one part of the body, he's messing with it all. That means that he's got to deal with the head, and the head is Christ. That means he's going to get whooped again, and again, and again, and again. But you're only going to whoop him if you resist him. You withstand him. You come against him. And the only way to do that is to be rooted and established in the word of God. And understanding the promises that Jesus has already paid the price for you. Jesus has already provided the way for you. Jesus has already declared that, hey, these powers and principalities have no effect on you. I am the head. I have all the authority. I have all the power on heaven and on this earth. That's why the word says, as Jesus is, uh, 1 John 4, 17 says, as Jesus is right now, so are we in this world. Guess what? You're the same as Jesus in your spirit. You are the same as Jesus in this world. Come on. Woo, I'm, getting, I'm about to shot myself happy. I'm getting happy. 2 Corinthians 6.16 says, The Lord says that I will dwell in them and among them. Did you know that God himself is in you? God himself is in you. If you've been born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that resurrection from the dead power, that's in you too. That's in you too. So you can't tell me that the devil has any hold against you, has any power. Whew. Praise the Lord. 1 John 4, 4. 4 4 says that greater is he that is in you. Come on, say it. Greater is he that is in me. In me. In me. Than he that is in the world. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Praise the Lord. Colossians 2.10 says that we are complete. Complete in Christ. <laughs> we are complete in Christ. What, is it, what else does it say? Who is the head over all powers? And all principalities. Brothers and sisters, it is time to stand and walk in victory. Yeah. It is time to stand and walk on victory. Yeah. Tread on victory. It's time to take our eyes off of the world that's going around around us. The world is, I'm telling you what, the word says it's going to get worse and worse. But that doesn't mean that we have to crumble. Because... All powers and principalities are under Jesus. All powers and principalities are under you. God is in you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? What can come against you? Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. We thank you for that power. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you dwell in us and among us. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Bashan, thank you. I'm on
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. Either God's word is true or it ain't. Either God dwells in you or he doesn't. Either that spirit of power is in you or it ain't. You know, some people have the idea that we pray and and pray and God's going to God's going to do something out here. Well, you don't have to wait. Because God's word is true or it ain't. You know, you know where God works and where where God moves is where he is. <laughs> and the Bible says that God is in you. He can move wherever you are. He can work wherever you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for revelation knowledge of Christ in us and the Holy Spirit in us, alive and power. Father, help us understand that, that we, too, contain all the power and all the authority over these devils in darkness in this world. Father, let that just explode as revelation knowledge within us so that we can stand, not only stand, but we can Walk in victory and walk on victory all the days of our life. Our cup runs over. Goodness and mercy shall always follow us. Thank you, Lord, that you always are with us and among us. Lord, you go before us. You go beside us. And you're in us. Thank you, Lord, for that revelation, that understanding that we can walk in victory all the days of our lives. Though darkness may come against us, we stand unswervingly on your word and on your promises and on the, the work of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Did anyone get excited this morning? Is anyone thrilled to know that no matter what this year brings, we've got the power and you've got the victory no matter what. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. And grab your Bibles. Oh, a lot of you are slow getting up. <laughs> Say, this is God's word. This, God, this is truth. And if it worked for them, it works for me. The words in this book bring me health. Bring me wealth. Bring me peace. Bring me, joy, bring me joy and bring me power. Bring me power. I'm, standing on the word, I'm standing on the word unswervingly, unswervingly unmovable, unmovable and unshaken, unshaken because God is, me, God is for me and his word is true, word is true or, it or it isn't. But it is true. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. He doesn't look too thrilled about that. 
<laughs> Brother Bill has a word. <laughs> Frank's good. As we were as we were praying this morning, what was impressed upon my heart that this is a new year. There's a lot of people out there that don't know the Lord, that are hurting, that are bound. We need to begin expecting this year divine appointments. If you remember about Peter and Cornelius, Peter wasn't seeking what God was telling him to do. There are going to be people that God's going to bring in your path. They're, they're going to be inquisitive. They want to know the truth. And God's going to direct them your way. Be willing to go. Because God cannot use angels to minister to them, to preach the word. He has to use us. So begin to expect people to come to us this year. To you. Neighbors, co-workers, friends, family, strangers. God's dealing with them right now. They're seeking to know him, be expecting divine appointments. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. The spirit of truth. You know all things. You have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. The spirit of truth will guide you and lead you and tell you what to say in that hour. Hallelujah. Boy, praise God for that. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to use my peanut brain to give the answer. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We guys are blessed. Let's, hey, you know what? Let's, uh, let's pray over uh, the meetings this week. Don't forget uh, Chip Brim is going to be here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Woo! It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a great time. Time of refreshing, time of refilling. So we can launch ourselves into 2021. You know, I tried to set the tone, you know, for Chip to come in. And, you know, I probably didn't even get there. But, hey, I tried. Thank you, Lord. All right. Father, we thank you for this time and this fellowship, Lord. We just thank you for all these people that chose to come here and to hear your word and to hear your truth. And we thank you for the victory in Christ that, that you have given us. Fully. And we just thank you for, for Brother Chip as he comes in here and ministers to us, Lord, and that he, that he ministers truth and what the Holy Spirit leads and guides him to minister. And we just thank you that it is anointed. And, and uh, Father, we just are looking forward to being blessed by Brother Chip and that we can bless him with our, with our gifts in any way we can. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. And we give you all the glory and honor. Amen and amen. Well, you guys are dismissed. It's a miracle. It's 11.35. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah.